All right, everyone, so today's big idea will be that we're going to start to add sound uh, to our project. And we saw that we could have sound when we did topic two, which was the, the movie. Uh, but there we added sound directly to a frame. What we're going to do now is add talk or add uh, sound or speech uh, via code. So we'll be able to have sound, you know, long soundtracks or short sound effects in our library. And then via code, we'll be able to play the sound from the library. The first way we'll do this is we'll add sound effects to individual elements, like the gate. The gate opens up. I have a, a sound of a creaking door. We'll use that. We have other sounds like, uh, like growling sounds and other things. We will use sound effects first. Once we understand how that works, then we're going to add sound effects, or we're going to have music to the whole project. So we then have to take into account uh, what happens when the person exits the game. You know, if you're running a game and you go back to your home screen or something, the music should not continue to play. And unless we program that, it will. The music will continue to play in the background. So the first thing you want to do is, in the network folder, if you go back to web design folder, into our CIS 126 class, in the topic three work files, there's a folder of music. Copy that music folder to your flash drive or desktop. So copy that music folder. So again, make sure that your sound has been muted or uh, you have headphones because it gets pretty distracting with a lot of sounds playing. I'm going to play a couple of these just so you hear what they sound like. Let's see. So we have, for example, Wood Creek. So that's going to be the sound when the gate opens up. Let's see. We Crash. So that's a possible sound of breaking the window. I've got another one. That might be better for breaking the window. A couple of monster sounds. That one's really light. There's that one too, so that's female monster growl one and two. So there's some sound effects there. And then of course there's this one of knives. So that might be for the spikes. And then uh, the other ones are uh, actual like soundtracks. So these shorter ones, these smaller size files are great for quick sound effects that that activate and then go away, and then we've got some other sounds in the b that'll play in the background. So this is more of a soundtrack. sounds that kind of help bring the ambience also. Uh, the game works, but it'll feel more complete once we add some music. So make sure you've got all of those sound files, a copy of those music files. Uh, we uh, need to then have our project uh, open, so go ahead and open your, up your project and we can go back to scene, um, scene gate. So I'm on the gate scene. We'll go to file, import to library. We're going to import starting one sound file first. This importing doesn't matter what scene you're in. That's fine. But conceptually, we're going to use that wood creaking sound in this scene here. Uh, so from any scene, I'm going to file, import. 
to library find your sound files I put them on the desktop for myself let's see so we'll start with Wood Creek first go ahead and import to the library Wood Creek Now if you look in your library, you're going to see there's a new item in your library, woodcreek.mp3, shows you what it looks like, there's a little play button there, you can also play it inside of Animate. So we need to do, you know how we're, we sort of, uh, well, we, we add an instance name to the, we add an instance name to movie clips that we want to control. We need to do something similar to sound. In the library, we sort of have to give an instance name to a sound file, and then via code, we can activate it. So when you see your sound in the library, double click the icon like you're going to edit it. And we've got options tab and action script tab. So here's the properties of my sound file. Go to the action script tab and we'll see what's important there. Everything here is basically off. We're not using this sound file with ActionScript. If we want to use ActionScript and this sound, turn on export for ActionScript. Once you turn it on, it also activates export in frame one, meaning we are able to use this sound starting from frame one. We usually don't want to change that. What you could change then is class. That's sort of like the instance name. The instance name that we're going to type to access this sound. So I think this instance name here, so to speak, is a little too, uh, it's a little too long. So we can call this uh, glass underscore SND. sound file glass sound so the first step to using any of these sounds with action script is to do this that you double click the sound you go to the action script tab you activate export for action script and then you can most likely change the class, change the instance name, so that we can type this, uh, the code a little easier. Wait, not, not glass yet. I'm thinking ahead. Glass is for breaking the window, isn't it? This one will be creak. Creak sound. So at this point you can click OK and it'll give you a pop-up which is going to uh, pop up every time which we can stop. A definition for this class could not be found, etc. Don't worry about this, this is just saying you've never used this sound in ActionScript before. We need to create special code for it. That's great, but it's going to pop up every time we add a new sound. So turn on Don't Show Me This Again.
So now you'll see in your library that the sound file has sort of like an instance name. It's under linkage. All right, so that's got that. Sarah, do you have a question? Sarah, do you have a question? Okay. Remember, if you guys need any help, raise your hand, call us over. Me and Angie are here to help you. So, creek sound is what we're going to use for uh, playing this sound at the right time. The right time that it plays is during the opening of this door. So the door opens when it's in a movie clip, right? So let's open up the MC Gate movie clip, where we're actually going to play this sound is in the animation of your gate. So double click MC Gate. And in my case, right, frame one is closed, frame five is open. So it'd be nice that the sound effect starts when the door opens. We've got a frame five in the actions layer. So again, somewhere in my action script code, I want to trigger the sound effect. So frame five would be a good spot. It's going to open. So let's go to frame five of the actions layer. Go ahead and open up your actions. We're on frame five of the gate actions layer. That's all right. You'll be able to see what I what I typed. One moment. So what I need here is to what I need here is to set up my way to access the sound in the library. The way we do it with action script. So we'll type a note here. Uh, create a variable to store the sound in the library. This is just a note, but we're saying that the code we're about to write is a variable that will store the sound. And I've said before, variables are pretty cool because they hold, they can hold a variety of things, such as sound. Next line, var space, we're creating this variable. We'll call it Creek SND. You know, notice it's slightly spelled differently. Uh, the instance name linkage was Creek underscore SND, and then the variable is Creek SND without the underscore capital S. Colon. When we created the counter to keep track of how many wrong doors were open, we had said, you know, door counter colon number. The kind of data that the door counter could hold was a number. The kind of data that this variable will hold is the name of my sound in the library, creek underscore SND. So this variable is going to hold the sound in your library, equals new Creek SND. So this is the basic syntax that you have to do. Let's say a little bit later we're going to have another sound effect such as growl. So I would do var growl sound colon growl SND equals new growl SND. So this sort of way to type it, we're going to do it over and over. Next line, we'll say play the sound. We've put the sound into the variable, but we haven't actually played the sound. That's a lot easier here. We'll do creek snd.play. So the first line, two sets up the ability to uh, sets up the ability to play the sound but what actually plays the sound is line five
that should be it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to test it. I'm going to test it in my simulator just because it might be a little bit faster. If you want to test it on a real device, you can do so. But again, please uh, use headphones on, on our devices. So let me control enter that to see if that works. I should now have a sound that plays when the door opens up. Let's see, start. Click. And then it goes to the next scene. So let's check our code there. This is what it is. First line sets us up second line actually plays it. Knowing that, we'll be able to do something very easy for the next ones. Question? Um, why didn't we have to code it like instead write an animation? You just like drop it? Yeah. Um, we could put the music directly on the timeline like we've done before. That would work totally fine. Uh, but we're doing it this way just to get practice with writing the code because in a, in a little bit later we're going to need to have it inter be a little more interactive than sort of automatic. Not until we do something does it actually play music. So with a very simple one like ours, yeah, we could have put it right here and it would have played no problem. But we want to get used to it in code so we have more ability. When it's in the timeline, it's sort of just automatic. It just goes. But with code, we have the ability to do more. Okay, so that one was for the door, the gate. We need to do something similar to the breaking of the glass. So step one, we import the sound. Step two, we add linkage. Step three, we write the code. Let's do that again. Let's import, go to file, import to library. And I liked uh, debris. Uh, yeah, debris hit, debris hits. That's that one sounds a little bit better for breaking glass. So we're importing debris hit. So we're gonna call like glass underscore mc. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. So once you've imported it into the library, it's alphabetical. I see debris hits. I'll double click. Double click the icon, then we go up to the action script panel. Export for action script. I don't like that name there, too long, so this is where we wanted glass underscore SMD. This is the name that we need when we have that something colon something. That's the something. And when we have new something, that's the something. Okay, so this glass breaking sound, click update, or click OK, that is. And the glass breaking sound needs to happen on which of our movie clips? window right. All right, so uh, I did a window right. That's the one that has the, the hit detection. If you put the rock onto the window, here's what's going to break. Yes? So I'm going to open up window, MC window right. This one is something similar somewhere. I need to add the, the glass breaking sound. Where it actually starts to change in my case is frame 5. So I need a blank keyframe on frame 5 of the actions layer. Press F7 on frame 5 of the actions layer. And in the code, we'll write basically the same sort of idea, a variable which will store our sound. Can I just copy the sound thing from the 
Yeah, you could. We'll practice one more time long wait, and then after that we'll copy and paste. Glass SND colon glass underscore SND equals new glass SND parentheses. Remember those parentheses. Why? Well, that's just the way it is. When they invented action script, they said that's the way it is. That's the way it is. This is it looks exactly the same as before, but the details are a little different. Yeah, you need a keyframe. Okay, that's set up our sound. How does it actually play? Glass SND dot play. And that's it. Save it and test it and see if that see if that plays once you put the rock through the window. Thank you. 
All right, so if I test it at this point, I should hear the uh, I should hear the sound now when I put the rock into the window. So let me check here. I'm going to open the gate, and I hear that. And then I'm going to move the rock onto the glass. There's the break. Okay, the next thing is we want the sound effect onto this painting. Right, the painting falls. That'd be nice if that had a sound effect. So the same sort of idea we're now going to do for the painting. Uh, we have that other sound effect. Let's go back to file, import to library, crash. I've got a sound effect called crash. So we'll import that in. We'll add the linkage instance name. We'll add then the variable and then dot play at the right place. So could sound effect would also be for the um, for touching the the portrait the first time too. Yeah, I don't have one for that, but that'd be a good point. Like some sort of movement sound effect, mm -hmm. and then eventually when it breaks and crashes, then then crash. So crash. We have crash dash one MPEG. Let's double click it or MP3. Action script. So crash SND. Crash SND, yep. Could be anything we want as long as we're consistent. That makes sense. This is a crash or break or whatever we want. So crash underscore SND. Click at the bottom to uh, to click OK on that to apply that. going to need the the same var and all of that same setup so we'll click OK here while I'm here I, I still have my code from adding the window breaking you can save yourself a little bit of typing by copying and pasting that where we need it it's not a whole lot that you're saving you know, you'll, you won't have to retype var and new and play, but you're going to need to retype the name of the variable, the name of the new linkage name, and here and here. So it's not a whole lot that you're really saving, but let's see how that works. I'm going to copy the current code there. And we need this crashing sound to play on MC Painting. MC Painting. We have frame one, the painting is normal. Frame five, that's when we touch the painting. Uh, the next frame uh, seven, it's also changed there. But then when it actually broke, in my case, is 10. So on frame 10, actions is where we want the sound. Now, technically, maybe depending how you animated this, you'll have to figure out where on what frame to, to trigger the sound. Uh, it's already broken on mine. It's on the wall on frame 7. It's broken on the floor on frame 10. I didn't make any other tween or anything special. But if you did something special there, you could further uh, add the sound code where you think it should go. But in my case, it's 10. We already had the code here that says animate the the painting it falls and then we stop then we have remove event listener no longer let the person click on the painting you remember that from a while ago if we didn't have that the person would be able to still click on the painting even though it was on the floor and then it would suddenly appear on the wall and fall down again so this remove event listener is saying don't let that be clickable anymore give yourself a note here because when you make your version of the game, you might want to think of things like this. I can't touch this thing anymore. I've touched it three times. I can't touch it anymore. 
So this syntax, remove event listener, will stop something from being clickable again, which I did mention before, but we'll add a note. We'll say uh, stop the ability to have something be touchable. Use remove event listener. We have a we have add event listeners where we're saying something like the painting is waiting for a click. Painting add event listener is waiting for a, a touch tap. The opposite is remove event listener, and we still say, okay, what are we stopping to pay attention to? A touch. So the syntax is just about the same as the add event listener, but this time it's remove, and then it further says. We had the painting fall. Now, because this syntax is also a little bit different, notice there's the movie clip this root. Uh, this is often also necessary because we've got inside of the timeline of the of the painting, we've got the world of the timeline inside of the painting, and we want to remove the ability to touch it. But that's on a higher level of the code. So we have to say right here, on the root, on the parent, on the higher level where this painting exists, go back and we will find the painting and then remove its event list. So making a note here, usually you need movie clip this root to, so to speak, go back to a higher level of code, the root or parent timeline. So those are just notes for what the code is there. I probably explained it previously, but it's good to have a note. So since I copied my code just a moment ago, I pasted it in, and I need to change those elements. Now it's, uh, what do you call it, crash? crash sound, new crash sound. Crash sound play. Wow, these sound effects are so realistic. So I'll save that and test it. Yeah, there's two different glass sounds that I put there, crash sounds, so you can switch them if you want to change them or use the same one twice, sure. Let's see how this one sounds. Yeah. So, whichever one you want. 
whichever one you like, then you can switch them around. And then we can't click on them anymore because we had remove listener. Right, so if we've got those sounds, then uh, there's a couple of other sounds we can have. I have there some growling sounds. So uh, that ghost that is coming to get us on the hallway right, we could use that sound effect there as well. If we look at hallway right, So on hallway right, we have this working a little bit different. We have the animation, instead of that ghost being animated in its own uh, timeline, we've got it in the main timeline. So we can add the sound directly here on the actions layer of this timeline, hallway right. We'll do the usual. We have to import the sound, give it a linkage name, and then add it to the timeline. I'm going to do it in the actual hallway right in a moment. The, I want to add a female growl 2, female monster growl 2. So let's import. Import to library, we'll do female monster growl number two. Let's do growl two sound. We have a growl one and a growl two. Uh, the point of changing these names is to make it a little easier for us to type. So growl2, SND. So I'll click OK on that. And where the, uh, where the ghost starts coming at me, in my case, is frame 25 of the hallway right. So I'll create a blank keyframe, frame 25, and I'll add the usual there, the code to play the sound. frame 25 of the hallway right we'll add the we'll add growl 2 SND growl 2 underscore SND it's a new instance of growl 2 SND and then we we play growl 2 SND Exactly, so once we test it, we'll see it's too short. We'll have a way to repeat it in just a moment. Let me play that one. So we 
we've got the uh, we've got the variable that we created, grow 2 SMD, that's the one we're playing. I made a little mistake a second ago and I put that name instead. So that. So I'll test that. Let's see, so I'll start, go forward, break the window. Go to the right. And then I'm dead. Well, it would be nice if it, it repeats. We can also have it repeat. We can also have the sound start at different moments in time. It took a little bit too, too long. The growl didn't actually happen until the creature is a little bit closer to me. So we can change when does the sound start to play. The default is start to play the sound from the beginning of the file. But we needed to have it play a little bit later. And then also have it repeat. It'd be nice if it growls a couple of times, not just once. So we can have the sound repeat as well. That has to do right here. We said play, and we said, okay, from the beginning of the sound file, play it one time. If we specify two options, one is when does it start, comma, how many times does it repeat? So let's say if we put zero, comma, three, that is saying start from the zeroth millisecond of the sound, comma, play it three times. If we need to start one second after our the beginning of our sound file, we would type 1,000. The units here are milliseconds. There are 1,000 milliseconds in one second. So if I want to start something one second after the beginning, it's 1,000. If I wanted to start three seconds later, it's 3,000 milliseconds. If I want to take only three quarters of one second, what is that? 750. 1,000 is one second. Three quarters of one second, 750 milliseconds. If I wanted to start half a second before or after, it's 500. I'm not quite sure how many we need, so let's just try it at 1,000. 1, we can refine that. We're saying start one second after the, the beginning of the sound file and repeat it three times. Maybe we'll cut it off at the beginning and we'll have to figure out the right amount of milliseconds, but it should repeat three times. So try that. not repeating. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there it is. It is repeating, but you see the problem was we needed to start one second. We needed to st we needed to start one second uh, past the beginning of the sound file, and it did repeat. But then when it repeated, it still played the original 1,000 second milliseconds that we didn't need. So that sound that we have there then is, is not quite the best. We needed to edit it a little bit more to prepare it. There's only so much we can do in the code here. So uh, we might touch a little bit on audio editing a little bit later. But for the moment, it's OK. I'm not loving it, but it's OK. And I'll put it to 500, maybe. So really, ideally, we would want to, to edit the sound perfectly and then put it into our project and use it. Let's make a note above here. If we say play dot x comma y, x is. Uh, delay start x milliseconds after the zero point of the sound, the, the very first millisecond of the sound. If you added the second option, y, that one is loop 
number of loops. Number of times to loop. That's what we had here. We had an x and a y. Starts me half a second from the beginning of the sound file and repeat it three times. It will not then play any more times after that. It's basic, but the problem with it is that we need to have the sound added to our timeline, and then we can edit it there to crop the sound and fade it in and out. We can, we can probably do that by a code, but that's probably going to be way too many lines of code than we want to deal with. True, it would be easier to just perfectly um, isolate the sound in like a audition or something. Exactly so. That's a, make Everyone make a note of this. We have in this room Adobe Audition, which is a very cool and powerful way to, to edit and create sounds. So we're not going to look at it together just yet, but in our start menu, you have Adobe Audition, Audition, which will let you crop a sound, increase its volume, mix different sounds together. So I'll make a note. It's best to have, have your sound prepped before using it in Animate. You could use Adobe Audition to prep your sounds. That one comes with the whole Adobe Suite. Another one that I like, or use the free Audacity. You can go search that. Audacity is related to audition and that it's an audio editing software. But the great thing about Audacity is that it is free. And portable. And portable, so you don't even have to install it anywhere. Keep it on your flash drive. Audacity is part of the Adobe suite. So that you have to download, you know, 20 gigabytes and you have to buy it to use it. Here with Audacity, it's totally free. Just go search for audacity.com or something and you'll have a free audio editor. I use it all the time. We have one more sound effect. We've got the room where the, uh, the spikes appear. So this will be very similar as before. We add the spike sound effect. We give it a linkage. We write the code on the proper frame. Let's do that. Let's go to File, Import to Library. And we want this time Knife Sharpen. In the library, we'll call it Spikes. Knife Sharpen. Action script export spikes SND. The spikes are animating in their own movie clip. So same thing, we'll find the right frame in our MC spikes and then add the spikes SND. So let's see, MC spikes. Basically, they're fully extended on frame 15. Frame 1, they're, they're barely visible in the wall. Frame 5, they extend a bit. 10, even more. 15, by the time you get there, you're dead. So on frame 15. 
19 is where we'll add the code. Actually, we need it on frame 16. We had code elsewhere that when we die, we jump to frame 16. So let's add a blank keyframe on frame 16. Frame 16, F7, and here's where we'll add the sound effect. Frame 16. We're creating uh, spikes, SND, which is based on spikes underscore SND. And then it plays spikes. SND. I'm going to say start the sound from the beginning. I believe that one plays just right. And yeah, let it uh, maybe play three times or something. Two times. If you don't put anything in the parentheses, it'll play just normal as before. But if you want to control it a little bit, when do we start and how many loops, you can do that. Let me just check. That is what I call the spikes, right? Um, too many panels. Uh, Knife, uh, yep, spikes SND. That's the code. Run it and go to the left hallway. Go to the wrong door too many times. You should then get the spikes visibly appear and you should have the sp spike sound. All of these sounds that I got, I actually uh, downloaded them from the YouTube uh, creator library. I mentioned it before when you worked on your topic two to, to choose a cool sound for your for your topic two movie. There's a there's a tab of sound effects. So I browsed around there a little bit and found a few sounds. You might find other ones that you like. But they're inside of the YouTube creator studio. left this time. I'm going to open the wrong door. The random number generator killed me right away. And there I am getting spiked up. Let me play that again. Maybe I won't get killed so fast. Oh, I'm pretty unlucky today. So, there's too many spikes. I I'm too dead, so I'll only put uh, a loop of two or maybe one. Two loops. So we, we used our various sound effects. These happen as the result of something. Uh, if that works, then we'll start to add our music. Anyone need some help? We want to make sure these basic sound effects work, and then we'll add a soundtrack to, to our various scenes. So anyone need a bit of help? OK, so the idea is going to be very similar, that we import a sound and we create a variable but it's going to be much more complex because we have to think about it in these terms. When you, you experienced, most likely, when you did the topic two, you put a sound on scene one. 
And I had asked you in the instructions to use the stream sound sync. So your music is playing your first few frames on scene one. Then it goes to scene two and the music stops. It doesn't continue. So then some of you said, okay, I'll use event sync. But I said, don't use event. I said, use stream. That's why some of you got minus points. Listen to the instructions. So what's happening is that if we have a sound effect set to stream, it only plays for the length of the amount of frames. What, in, what if it doesn't let you stream? That's because you're in the wrong kind of file. You need it to be in an ActionScript 3 file instead of an HTML5 file. So with ActionScript, we are going to be able to control some of those things. Let the sound play and let it keep playing from scene to scene. And actually, the default is let it play from scene to scene. You sort of see that when the spikes kill me. When the spike sound effects play, I go to the death game over scene, and the sounds are still playing. So with the built-in dot play, it is going to play throughout your whole movie. The problem with that is I want different sounds in different scenes, maybe. I want the normal sound that plays throughout the normal part of the game, and then I want a different sound when I'm dead, a different soundtrack, and I want a different soundtrack when I, when I win. So we'll need to turn off sounds. Furthermore, as I said, when you're playing the actual game on a real device, and a person is playing, and let's say it's a really complex game, and I need to go uh, answer a phone call. Whoops, I need to exit and answer a phone call. If we don't program it, the music is still going to be playing, even though you've exited the game. So the soundtrack is going to be playing while you're on the phone, or doing something else. So we need to keep track of all of that. Having the sound play on multiple scenes, having one sound stop when another one needs to play, and then also having it stop when I exit, and having it resume when I get back into it. It stopped at a certain t point in time, and when I go back into my game again, I want it to be playing at that same moment. We need to program all of that, and that's more complex. But let's, let's give that a try now. I'm going to use, let me see here, which one? Yeah, I'm going to use 4 dash. This nice happy sound will be our first music that we see, and then the music will change to scary music later. I'm going to call it like start music, start SND. Start SND, or maybe welcome SND. Yeah, any of those will work. So let's um, go back to our very first scene, scene zero. Maybe home SND. So back to ho uh, home scene, and we'll file import to library. We're going to use 4 dash. You might not have heard it, so let me do this again here. Okay, so it's playing at a certain point. I exit. The sound stops. I go back to the game. It's in the same part. We have to pro We have to program that or else it'll start from the beginning. And it's more professional obviously that it continues from this point. Came back to the same point. Okay. So that's what we're about to do. Import four dash, and we'll call it. Uh, we'll give it an action script linkage of home, but this time, whoops, because this time it's not, uh, it's not, it's not a sound effect. It's a soundtrack. It's background music. I, I want to give it a uh, a sound of uh, welcome or what am I calling this thing? Home underscore muse music. This is just for me to take a... When I see all of this in the library, some of them have SND for a sound effect, and some of them will have Muse for music, background music. So these names... Um, these are the names that'll help you. So click OK. Let's go to frame one, actions layer. 
We've got all of this code so far. Let's go to the end of the code. VAR home muse colon home underscore muse equal to new home muse. It's the same as before, but then it's going to change. In order for us to have more In order for us to have more ability to control this, we create another variable on the next line. We call it home muse play. We're creating another variable that will help us with the pausing and playing of our sound, the stopping and the playing. Before, it was just dot play, and it worked. Here, we need to be more complex, so we create another variable to help us control the playback. Let's say, variable to store the music, variable to help us control the music. Home Muse Play colon sound channel capital S capital C. This is a variable that holds objects of type sound channel. Once we have this kind of container, we will be able to pause and play the music basically. Equals the particular music we're trying to play home muse dot play so before we had something like spikes <coughs> sound play but here what we're doing is we're, we're playing the sound and storing it in another container so we can control it what I want to do here is have it start from the beginning, comma, let it loop 10 times. So the music plays for about a minute, and then it loops. So this is very similar to before with a little tweak, and we need to do a few more things. But at this point, save it and, save it and run it. Save it and test it. This is the part where definitely you need headphones because now a lot more music is going to play constantly. So we've got the sound playing on the first scene. If I go to the help scene, still playing. Back, still playing. Throughout my whole game, it's still playing. <coughs> if you were to test it on a real device, it would still work. But then when you exit, when you go back to the home, it's still going to play, even though your game is not running on your device. So let's confirm that it at least plays. Question? Yes.
So one more little thing here, and then we'll go on. Uh, this this is pretty cool. Uh, the sound is playing then throughout my whole project. Th that would have been nice to know uh, back on topic two, but we hadn't c covered action script yet, so that's okay. Some of you were very creative, and I see what you did was you did crop your sound. Somehow you figured out how to crop your sound from scene to scene, so it continued. That's good. If you didn't do it, that's fine. It wasn't quite a requirement. But here now, we have a sound that starts to play at some scene, and it continues throughout the whole game. Well, we need to refine it, so that intro music is just intro music. I want a different sound for the gate. So we'll learn how to act deactivate one sound and activate another. And one more thing I want to do then is confirm also that it's playing even though when I exit my app. And the first time this gets published, it takes the longest. Just taking a quick look while that's happening. Okay, here we go. So, here it is running on my real device. Sound is playing. I click start on there. Okay, so it's running on my real device. I say, well, uh, that's, I'm done for today. I'll continue the quest tomorrow. And then I click to go back home. It's still playing. I'm swiping around, it's still playing. Oh, no. Uh, you know, I'm going to go off to some other app, and, and it's still playing on the other app. <laughs> so I have, to, I have to force quit it. Yes, it's great. Okay, so I force quit. Uh, so, okay, we need to set that up. These are the things that happen as you... As you beta test these things, this happens, that happens, this happens. So let's continue our code here. It's not done yet. We uh, we set this up that the sound will play right away. We actually don't want it to play unless we're actually in the app. We want it to stop playing when we're not in the app. So to further set this up properly, next line we'll say. Uh, Set up the sound, but don't play it unless, and we'll do the unless in a moment. So, to stop any sounds that are playing, we do sound mixer dot stop all. We set up here, play a sound, whatever sound. Here we're saying, in our sound mixer, stop all the music. So we first said, play the music. But actually, not really. Play the music only when the game is running. Stop the music when the game's not running. And the way that works is we've had these event listeners. We had an event listener pretty much always for a tap. Tap on this, that's an event. We had that example where we picked up the rock. That was a, a start drag, I think. We had touch tap and we had start drag. We, we need another event here to check, is the game running or not? Next line, we'll say event handler to check if the game is running, which is native application dash or dot native application dot add event listener we saw the native application code when we wanted to quit the app remember when you get to the good ending or the bad ending there's the button that says quit and in order for us to exit the app we did this the change will be what happens inside of the uh, inside of the uh, parentheses. Inside of the parentheses, we'll say event dot active. Notice this spelling. Very important that it's spelled like this. Oh, sorry. Activate. Activate. So 
on the event that the app has been activated, <laughs> when it's activate, do something. So all of this is saying about our app. When our app is active, it is activate. Once we've activated the app, space, and say, FN play home music. A function that will play the music when we're on the home scene. That's all basically saying on the event, once we check that the game is running, play the music in a function. We need to then go to the next line. Function, function play music, and turn on the music. So next line. Function, function play music. Parentheses quotes. Inside of the parentheses, we have event colon event colon void. This is where we actually want the sound to play. So we're going to leave line 26 alone, but you're also going to copy, not the var part, just home, etc., etc. Copy that and place it inside of. Why do you mean the home thing that started music? If you change the home starter, no draw it. Yeah, we have our scene zero set as home. So, start music? Yeah, start music. So I'm going to copy home use play, and then I'm going to paste it right there without the var. The var is there for the first time, but then when we actually play it, we don't need var. We'll say after we check if the game is running, play the sound. So we do have to do this because as I was setting up the project at the beginning of the semester and figuring out the best things to teach, and I was beta testing it and testing it on devices, and I was figuring out, oh, this happens when that happens. I need to have an answer for that. <laughs> and so basically, we need to have the, the first lines, 24 and 26, to kind of set ourselves up and then we need the other lines to actually have it work when we exit and start the game. Question? Yes.
right, so what this code is saying is we've got uh, a different way to play the sound in the event of the movie of the game actually running. This is if the game is running, play the music. We're then going to need something similar that if the game is not running, we're going to cut the music. Question. Okay, I'll be with you just one more. Let me write one more thing and I'll be right there. So we're going to need something similar here for stopping the music. Go to your next line and, and we're going to try again this native application thing. Basically, let's copy. Let's copy this whole line here, native application. Let's copy that, and paste it at the end, and we're going to change it a little bit. Instead of when the when the app when the app is active, we're going to change it so that it's deactive. So it is again native application, native application, add event listener. This time is event deactivate. So one event listener is waiting for the app to be activated. The other one is waiting for it to be deactivated. And therefore, we're going to have a function, function stop home music. What we need to happen here is create a function on the next line that defines that. So function fn stop music or home music. That'll be event colon event colon void. And inside of that function, I need again this stop stop all. So you see we have one event handler waiting for the app is active, does something, plays the music. We're waiting for another one. If you quit the app, if you exit the app, cut the music and then it's not going to keep playing on your other apps. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to run that on my device. If that works, then I'll help people. But it looks like I've got an error there. Okay, that probably has to do with we need something up here. Just one moment.
Yeah. Oh, here's the thing. Uh, we, when we did our copy and paste, we didn't need to be so specific. Uh, we didn't need to say again. We don't need to say sound channel again. Uh, we already set up here. Create the variable home use play sound channel. Uh, we didn't need to say it again here. So it's just home muse play. So if, you, if everyone's getting this error here, uh, JT, try this. So uh, instead of it saying, you know, we copied and pasted, but we, we copied too much. We didn't need the sound channel colon. Take that out and see if that works. What? Should just remove the colon sound channel. Yes, under function FM. Start using it. Yes, yeah, so that was it right there. That was it right there. If everyone's getting that issue, uh, well, we copied too much. Make sure that inside of your function to play, it doesn't have call and sound channel. We need sound channel up here when we create the variable, but we didn't need it down here when we used the variable. Let's change that, and that should help it. That might have been your issue over here too, Alex, maybe? trying to do is it's playing right now when I exit I left the app and now I'm back on the home screen and if I go to some other app like Twitter or whatever it's not playing anymore so I'm in a different app it's not playing that's the point of that code there then if I go back to my game again if I go if I switch back to the game it's playing again but it's playing back at the beginning if you, if you listen carefully Right there, you heard like the gong sound. If I go back to the game again, it's starting over. So it's kind of working. It is stopping when I exit, and it is starting when I enter. That's what I want, but it still needs a little bit more. Anyone need any help at this point? So we'll write a note here. Check if we exit the game. If we exit the game, stop the music. Looks like someone's trying to break in and steal our gold. <laughs> So check if the game is stopped. 
so stop the music. Well, the way that uh, there, there's no there, action script has a way for us to stop and play music, but there's really no way built in to pause music. Music pause, however, happens in a way of us keeping track of where the music currently is. Remember, we have the option here: start at the beginning of the sound or start two seconds later, or start seven seconds later. So we have a spot here to start at different points. So knowing that, we can keep track of how long has the music played, and then start again from that point. Let's back up where we created the variables. Back up to where we've got these variables. Home use, home use. It's okay, we're grown ups. We can let it happen. It's not a big deal. Let's go on. So, the uh, these two variables, we will add another variable. We need another variable which is one that keeps track of when the point, uh, how long the music is played. So after muse play, let's create another variable. Home muse pause. Colon number equals zero. Let's do a little pause here. I'm going to go check on that. So Let's pause at this point. Uh, this is what the code is so far. We'll take a 10-minute break, and we'll come back.